What's up guys, Michael with Nocturnal Simulations again, and I hope you're having a good day. Today we will be going through the startup and initialization of the Honda Jet. I know that this is a popular jet for both PC and Xbox, and I figured this series might be helpful for some. You may notice that we are in Sedona, Arizona, and I've bought the Xcoder Designs Airport Scenery alongside the Sedona Red Rocks Terrain Pack, also from Xcoder, both of which are available on the marketplace. I hope to have a video exploring some of this fascinating terrain in the near future, so stay tuned. Let's head on out to the ramp and take an initial walk around the airplane itself. Alright, so first thing you'll notice over here is the external power supply. Uh, this is extremely helpful for if you're sitting around for too long or like we're doing right now, making a video or whatever reason, because the batteries in this aircraft are actually modeled. So if uh, you let it sit for too long, the batteries will drain to the point that one, the engines won't start, and then shortly after that, your avionics will actually shut off. And as you can see, everything is modeled very nicely in this aircraft, or the external model. Um, I'm very pleased with Flight FX's products, especially this jet and the Vision jet itself. And so far, been very pleased with the overall quality of specifically the Honda Jet and just how nice it's modeled and uh, how easy it is to fly. And we'll get to the flight section here in a little bit, but right here's your speed brakes, get your uh, your uh, lightning arrestor antennas, your trim tabs, trim tabs. And you can actually go into the systems and load up cargo if you want to open up the cargo doors and here we got the uh, front cargo area good for storage of a backpack or something like that and then if we go and check out the airplane inside it's not the tallest airplane but it's definitely rooming and you've got a full lavatory back here that's definitely nice for the occupants of this jet and if you can just imagine yourself sitting back here you definitely got a nice view especially on the departure out of Sedona here so with that being said we will cruise on up to the front of the aircraft here and go ahead and get into the cockpit currently the plane is sitting cold and dark and uh, let's go ahead and hop into the seat here All right, now that we're in the cockpit, we'll go ahead and turn the battery on. Oral warning. And the okay. Garmin systems will go through their self-checks and start up here. And you'll hear a couple things going on in the background, but all this is automated. In the center screen here, you will have this uh, launch screen and the get rid of that and get onto the map and instrumentations uh, page. You can go ahead and click on the bottom right soft key there and it'll pull that up. First things we'll do is go down here <coughs> and click on uh, the uh, load manager here which should be default okay. and you can actually click on these people individually and add and remove them from the payload which is really nice and you can do the same thing for cargo in the back and cargo in the front and this is a really neat feature and I've been pretty pleased with it so for today's flight we have four people and we're going to be taking a thousand nine hundred gallons of fuel so you can see here you have this plus 100, plus 500, so it's really easy to add fuel. So you just got to get a little bit above what your minimum fuel is, and we have 1,910 pounds, so 1,930 will work for us. Payload was 640 pounds, so we can, actually we were at 800 there, so let's go back down to 700, let's remove the front and we will actually take just a hair more at 650 so these guys must not have very much luggage after that we'll go on and click the sim actions button here and we can go ahead and close the main door close the cargo doors and we'll go ahead and remove the ground power so it quietens down just a little bit here and we'll go back to load manager and then we'll click on go to initialization So the next step will be doing our pre-flight and you'll click on this pre-flight progress 
or I'm sorry, the pre-flight button, and you'll see the system test is in progress. And you'll see the fire protection, so you'll have your warnings going off within the cockpit itself. Your caution, your master caution, your uh, ECAM memos down here. And then you should see these change to done when they're finalized and ready to go. Next up, we're going to go ahead and come down here, and we are going to set up our weights within the aircraft. So what you want to do is hit get from sim on all these. And this will automatically fill in all these spots and fuel and weight values. And then we can hit next. Uh, what we'll want to do then is this is your takeoff speed. So you can hit get from sim and it will automatically calculate your V1, your V rotate, and your V2 speeds. So then you can also turn them on. That way they show up over here on your uh, your speed tape and as you accelerate on your takeoff you'll see these start to scoot up to the top there for you and we'll go back and we have checked all three boxes which means we're done with our initialization and we can go ahead and accept that so next what we'll do is we will go through the checklist we'll start with the before starting engines checklist and I've already checked the battery since we've already got that on. And the nice thing about the Honda Jet is you can control your checklist through this dial right here and being able to press it. So the next item on our list is oxygen. So we will turn that on. Oxygen is normal. And pressurization is normal on an oxygen mask auto audio is normal. Electrical on and normal. So you get your on and normal for your electrical. Next you have your ELT, which is in normal. Nose wheel steering is in normal. Landing gear is down. Uh, it was not in this case because I had it set up on my throttle quadrant. So that is down now. Alternate gear, release handle, stowed, fully in. And oh, yeah, right here. Uh, so that's stowed all the way in, and you'll see with the emergency brake that this is the external. He basically pulls straight out. So that is good. Parking brake is set. We just set it again. Flaps. We want to check they're up. Let's see that they're up right here. Thrust levers are in their cutoff position, which they are. Speed brake is retracted which we saw that on our walk around that the speed brake which is right here again is in fact retracted <coughs> ice protection is normal and off so you got your normal normal off off for your engine ice and normal for your tail de-ice fuel panel is normal so we go back down here again normal 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 on your fuel pumps from the left center and right tanks your trim panel is set and normal so the trim is actually a little hard to see in this jet but if you see this tiny little green band here and you may not be able to see it in this video but there's a little tiny little green band right there and you may have just seen the uh, arrows light up once you're in that band that's where you want your takeoff trim to be set to so windshield heat if we go back down to here it's normal pneumatic panel once again, down here in the center pedestal, normal. Glare shield panel, everything's dark. We can go ahead and reset that warning from our test earlier. Chime is dark. Avionics initialization is the next step. So what we'll do is we will go through here and put our flight plan into the system. All right, to get to our flight plan, come over to the left GTC here and click on flight plan. Add the origin, which today is KSEZ, so Kilo Sierra Echo Zulu. And you'll see that it says Sedona. Click enter. Then our destination is going to be Case, K-A-S-E. So Kilo Alpha Sierra Echo, which is Aspen. And if we go into our add in route waypoint, we will have FLG, 
for I believe Flagstaff. And then we can click uh, that one. For, so it should show that we're going to FLG next. And then after FLG, we are doing a direct to Delta Victor Charlie. Delta Victor Charlie. Enter. And after that, we're going Delta Bravo Lima. Which I need to insert after Flagstaff. No, sorry, go back. Duff Creek. Insert after. And Delta Bravo Lima. And click enter. And this uh, this is the one that we're going to want. This, uh, this is all the way over in China. So we can go up here and look at this. And you can see that we got Flagstaff, Dove, and then Red Table. And what we'll do next is go to Procedures, Departures. There's no uh, SIDS and STARS for these two airports, really. Uh, just uh, there's not really a departure for uh, Sedona outside of just runway 3 so we'll go back the arrival like I said same thing just set up the runway 15 which is our arrival runway and then our approach we do have the localizer 15 going to Ajax so we will go ahead and load that in and you see that it built up everything there so if we go back to our flight plan we can click on uh, flight plan options show on map and we can navigate around use your mouse here to zoom around a little bit you gotta click and drag a little bit and then you can zoom in and make sure everything looks alright it's a little finicky but it's a nice way to zoom around which I definitely we just went to the wrong airport so let's uh, <laughs> zoom back out and go on up the case. Let's see if we can put that crosshair, which will be a, where you zoom in. Kind of close, if I can get the zoom direction correct. And then here you can see that we got a bit of a funky entrance because of that uh, red table waypoint there, the DBL. So, for case. This is actually not a bad thing because this will give us a chance to get our speed and everything under control before we descend down into the airport. So this all looks good. And with that being said, we can go back. And now our flight computer is programmed so that we can follow the flight path to Aspen. Next, we'll continue on through our checklist. So passenger briefing. Our departure states that we will be running or taking off of runway three from Sedona here. The, on a calm day, noise bait with procedure in effect. Scenic's flight below 6,500 MSL is not authorized. So as far as taking off from this airport, we will just do a straight out and then we will join our first waypoint. So I'll go ahead and click through that. Rotor pedals are adjusted. Seat belts, everybody's got them on. Doors are closed. And we can just double check. Uh, oh, you can't really look over your shoulder in this plane. So we'll go down here. Go to Sim Options. And Sim Actions. And you'll see that the doors are all closed. So we'll get there. Parking brake is set. Cast messages. So uh, engine oil, no, those these are fine because engines are off. Obviously, engines are set to shut down, and left and right generator are off. Electric volts, twenty three point five volt minimum. So if we go down here and go to our systems, and we currently have twenty two point five. So we are actually below that twenty three point five minimum. So what we will do is go back to our sim options and this is what I was talking about where you need to have your ground power and you'll see that we have it available we can turn that on now we're charging at 28.5 volts 
and we should see the voltage rise. Alright, so the voltage of the battery is not quite uh, 23.5, so what we're going to do is, since the power is disconnected, we're just going to go ahead and with the start here, and I will let the engines idle for a little while to charge those batteries back up. So we're going to pretend that the voltage is at 23.5 volts minimum, and what we'll do now is go ahead and start the engines. So first thing you want to do is you want to bring the thrust lever from off, or cut off to idle. And since today is an odd number, we're going to start the left engine, which is engine number one. And then we'll go down here and simply click start. And what you'll see there is the N2 will start rising. And we have fuel flow. The oil pressure will start rising. And then the temperature will start rising of the oil here shortly. And what we want to make sure is to avoid getting a hot start. If this succeeds up into the red, then of course we have to shut the engine down and have maintenance come and check it out. But uh, we should have a good start. Normally does a pretty good job. Should be up around 680, 690 on the temperature. And once that stabilizes, we can go ahead and start engine number two. Okay, 688. And two stabilized. And one stabilized. Oil pressure is good. Oil temperature is rising slowly. And we have a good fuel flow. So we'll go back down here to engine number two, bring that up to idle. If I can, there we go. And start engine number two. And we'll do the same thing. We'll watch this go. The N2 will start rising. So you should see the uh, oil pressure rising. Fuel flow's good. And one's starting to rise now. So we have ignition. And once again, we'll watch for that hot start. And it looks like we got identical engine temperatures. Uh, oil pressure is identical, and the temperature is rising. It should stabilize around the 74 degrees, 75 degrees, uh, just like engine one. Uh, we got good fuel flow on both engines. So we can go back down to our checklist. Engine start, engine instrument, engine instruments. <laughs> excuse me, uh, are good. Engine anti-ice as required today is a perfectly clear day. There's no need for anti-ice, so we leave that off for now. External power, disconnect. It should be disconnected up on the certain N2 automatically through the sim, but we'll go down here and double check. So we'll go ahead and turn the ground power off. And I actually use the E2 auto throttle mode, and we'll get into that in the next video. But go over here and check that our external power is good. And the last thing on this checklist is we will double check those flight controls are free and correct and that you have the correct gear set up for your home cockpit. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I want to make these videos in small digestible chunks so that it's easy to follow and you can uh, skip around easily and they're nice and short for you. So uh, next video we will go through the pre-taxi checklist and the taxi itself along with the departure, takeoff, and uh, climb. So look forward to the next video. I should have it out here in a couple days, and uh, I'll see you then. If you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you later.